Welcome to another episode of The Carmudgeon Show. My name is Jason Camisa. He is Derek Tam hyphen Scott. And we are a part of the Haggerty Podcast Network. This week's episode has no topic and many topics all at once. I uh, would say that's fairly normal for this show. <laughs> that's true. Um, we talk about two car solutions. Mm. We talk about uh, driving school, driving events, Radwoods. Uh, yeah, Radwood. A little bit of Thanksgiving mm-hmm. follow up. Shockingly, some Mercedes Benz content, but also a discussion about the ideal two car solution. Yes, which you know might be something that's not actually reachable, like the speed of light. Hmm. Or the limit my target, does not exist. My goal weight. <laughs> <That's also laughs> mean. Um, don't forget that we are brought to you by Haggerty. And if you like our content, you might consider joining Haggerty Drivers Club, which gives you unlimited 24 7 flatbed roadside assistance for all your classic cars, unlimited access to our valuation tools, which will become more important for you to learn about next week on the um, next week's podcast, which is on the Haggerty Bull Market. Uh, anyway, uh, lots of great stuff, including uh, our award winning magazine. And there is a link below for you to find out. Otherwise, find out more. Otherwise, Derek is going to clap. Right. Nope. Done. Beat you. This episode of The Carmungeon Show is brought to you by the Valentine One Radar Locator. Find radar before it finds you. Get more information at bit.ly slash valentine1 underscore haggerty. That's https colon forward slash forward slash bit dot ly slash capital V-A-L-E-N-T-I-N-E number one underscore capital H-A-G-E-R-T-Y. Outlaw Welt, right? Underscore Welt. Yeah. Outlaw underscore. Unterstrich. Unterstrich, yeah. That's like an under slash. <laughs> What That's is what this means. funny to you? <laughs> it's an Unterstrich. This means an understrike. An underslash. underslash yeah. yeah. It's That's like what a... What you do to people's cars. Instead of cars, calling it an underscore. <laughs> uh, I told you that I saw that vehicle again, right? We're recording. <laughs> and that was the beginning of the episode. <laughs> oh, shit. The video, yeah, you better stop. <laughs> Derek, angry Derek is my favorite Derek. Uh, <clears throat> I did not do any damage, to any cars ever who were who cut no, you I off. didn't. They did their own. I damage. mean, I, there, do you remember the scene? I, th- I think it was Everyone Loves Raymond. Uh, I don't really watch TV, but there was a scene with a parking lot with the Ford Tempo and the Mustang. Oh, that's not Everyone Loves Raymond. That was from Malcolm, Malcolm in the, in the Middle. Middle. Yes, I knew it was one of two of them. That plus the Tawanda scene from Fried Green Tomatoes, which is a, basically the same thing. Probably mm. also wasn't Fried Green Tomatoes. Probably a different movie that I... Sc- anyway. Ten things I hate yeah, about the, you. The, the the idea here is that I love parking lot violent scenes where like, you know, people go crazy over stolen parking spaces. And I mean, I just passively, aggressively parked Vangina out in the uh, parking spot. Vangina. So, okay, for the record, uh-huh. I got the license plate. I saw that. Uh-huh. Congratulations. Thank you. I was genuinely concerned that the California Department of Motor Vehicles and all its wisdom was going to deny you the simple pleasure of naming your license plate after your daughter. The California Department of Motor Vehicles can go fuck itself because it lost a uh, Supreme Court case where it was trying to, um, what is the word? Deny, uh, censor. Well, it, it was a censor. It was really a censorship issue because they were, uh, the California Department of Motor Vehicles decided it was the arbiter of what was appropriate speech and what was not. Um, and it was, uh, <clears throat> there was basically no rules. It was just. It's highly subjective. Yeah, following, like it would person. allow some things that were basically horrible because the person behind the counter didn't understand what it meant. But anyway, uh, the official story is that uh, I named my daughter Sheena after um, Croatian a grandmother named China, uh, J-Y-N-A-H, pronounced Shina. Um, of course, the real story is her name is Gina. Um, the funny thing is, <laughs> what? What's so funny about no, this? Nothing. <laughs> I did find someone on Facebook with the name Gina, J-Y-N-A-H, and I had the whole web page ready to go with screenshots. Like, if anyone stopped me at the DMV, like, this is my daughter. Don't you dare tell me what to name my daughter. But... I will say 11 and a half months from the time I ordered that fucking custom plate until it arrived, it still makes me laugh. Like Mm. I put it on the car and was immediately hysterical. (laughs) And then, you know, I've had a couple of people, like one of my neighbors asked, it's like, what is that license plate? And then he's like, Gina. And I'm like, yeah, I named my van Gina. And he was like, oh, where did Gina come from? 
I'm like, well, if you had to name your van, wouldn't you name your van China? And he was like, no, I'd probably call it a Dodge or like I said, okay. So, you know, fun fact, my van China is 800 miles overdue for an oil change. <laughs> he was like, what? And I'm like, my van China gets 25 miles per gallon. My van China seats seven men comfortably. <laughs> And he was looking, and then it clicked. And then it was, oh my God, I can't believe you did this. And I'm like, why would I not? Why would I do it? A license plate is an, an underutilized opportunity for comedy, period. And so I actually had uh, Vangina and Beatrice next to each other. So uh, I don't think I have a picture of it, so sorry about it. But uh, Beatrice's license plate is Dirty E30. And so I had dirt, I had a Dirty E30 next to my Vangina. Oh dear, <laughs> I hope that's not contagious. Stop, right, it doesn't stop being funny. I mean, you know, my vagina has four overhead camps. <laughs> it must be very high performance. <laughs> vagina revs to 6,400 RPM. Redline second higher. at 59 miles an hour. I mean, like it's just, oh God. I, I really think people take life too seriously. And the idea of a whimsical plate is something that really makes, makes brings me joy. All right. Um, well, and experience- brings my vagina joy too. <laughs> I am curious to hear how long it is before you encounter a member of the public who understands it, who is just like, that's amazing and hilarious. You're my hero. I'm more. It could be a while. I'm more curious to see how long it takes for the first person to give me the finger and like scream that I'm being like wildly inappropriate. And then that's when uh, this is name of Croatian grandmother, Sina with, you know, horrible Russian accent. And they're like, why, you know, meanwhile, she'll probably say something like, you know, in Croatian. <laughs> like, Shit, I picked the wrong language. Anyway, um, that is the first update of the day, is okay. that my vagina yes. is now plated. <laughs> well, congratulations on having a legally registered vagina. <laughs> it doesn't stop being funny. Uh, okay, so I went to Radwood, which was pretty interesting. Only one to, in Southern California. I went to the SoCal Radwood. Um, I was actually asked to be there by the Radwood people because you know our friend Art, who sort of runs Redwoods, a f- fucking idiot, um, and thinks that I would bring value to being there. So I flew down and God damn, that show is so good. It's yes. just so much fun. Yep. Um, I did give out an award based on nothing other than my own objectivity. Um, Subjectivity. My own objectivity. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> that was on purpose. Um, RML, which is Retro Modern Line Wheels, uh, had sent me a set of the prototype snowflakes um, and the snowflakes. Big snowflakes. Yeah. So the snowflakes were the wheels on uh, Mark 1 Volkswagen. Mark 1 GTI. GTIs. They were iconic. 13 inches. Mm-hmm. Um, and RML has made them in, remade them in 15 by 7. Um, and so. Uh, yeah, the, perfect for a Miata track car. Yeah, they're 4 by 100 lug pattern. Um, uh-huh. They're super light. They were, they're, and, and gorgeous. It would look funny on a Miata. I think the no. car is too, too modern. Well, I think we should try it. We find out. Somebody will Photoshop one. But um, there's that glug, glug, glug water. Jake, oh my God, what did you have for lunch? So weird. Anyway, um, so Brad, uh, who is the... uh, inventor of rml wheels um sent me a, a set he sent a bunch <laughs> of of RML. i think the founder of rml wheels he uh he sent a bunch around for fitment and i tried fitment for him verified that everything was worked and then sent it uh, out but i did give it to a deserving gentleman who's got a bunch of Scirocco's and wants them on his car so that oh, cool. was fun um, uh did they suit your car they did they they didn't fit perfectly, and here's why: the offset that Brad chose for the for the wheels are is really closer and more appropriate to the Mark II Volkswagens. Mm-hmm. So they're the same bolt pattern, um, but they stick out a little bit further. And your cars are lowered. My cars are lowered, and so the cabbie rubbed um, pretty substantially, and it's on Scirocco 16 valve shock uh, springs and the Scirocco is on coilovers and it rubs pretty substantially too. Um, but I did test fit it to a stock cabriolet and it fits no problem. So you just gotta, you know, you have to Not have a, have a car. slammed or, car. As Brad kept telling me to do, just roll the fenders, but oh. I'm, which you're not a fender rolling type. I have original paint on that cabbie. Like the wheels I wanted for the cabbie and there's original paint for it. And I just, I'm not, I'm not taking the chance that it cracks. So mm-hmm. unfortunately I couldn't use them, but uh, I wanted to make sure they went to a good home. Um, 
And whilst at the wood that is rad, I ran into a follower of ours who had made us the Carmudgeon Show keychains back in the day, um, mm-hmm. which is what's on um, the Rover, the Rover. keys. And no one has ever seen these, I don't think. I think I showed them once, perhaps, oh, or maybe. maybe on Instagram. But he made these amazing Carmudgeon Show uh, 3D printed keychain uh, keychains for us. And so I ran into him, and uh, his Instagram is Outlaw Unterstrich Welt. Yes. Yeah. So Outlaw underscore W E L T. Yes. I guess Welt is an, a German, uh, an American name. It's what happens when you get whipped. Yes. Yeah, Welt. Get a Welt. Um, but Welt in German is world. Um, but anyway, he's just just a really cool guy with apparently a lot of time on his hands. So like and I walk in 3d printing materials and yes. So first thing he hands me like a Beatrice keychain and he made a big one and a small one. So that's now Beatrice's uh, keychain. He made me a blow me keychain. Um, oh, that's a head gasket. But do you know what that head gasket belongs to? Uh, show the camera here. here it's go. an inline four. That's a lot of space. Mm. Why Is would there a- be so much space? On one side of it. Because it's... It's half of a V8. Oh. That came from an SD1. Oh. It's the Rover 3500 head gasket. And oh. it says, blow me. As in, blow my head gasket. Yeah. Um, That's very on brand yes. for you. But he did also make a Jason's Tools Don't Fucking Touch. That's fine. That's very fun. A, and then one of the logos for each show. Carmudgeon. Here we are. Jason Camisa and Derek Tam Scott right there. Camisa's Ultimate Drag Race. Icons. And Revelations Untold Stories about Automotive Legends. I thought this was so cool. Yeah. Um, They're very um, faithful. They are very faithful. Faithful to our logo. He done. did actually spell my name wrong on that one. Uh, Jason Camisa on the icons. But I really don't care because A, they're cool. And B, he drove me to the airport. From Aww. This is the thing about car community that I love. Meet some rando who we've chatted on the internet with. He walks over, he's like, I got stuff for you. Where's this story going? Meeting a rando on the internet that you chatted with? It's quite a car you've got out there. Thanks. Did you have a seat? Yeah, and who then sits me in his 126 manual swapped coupe Mm. and drives me to the airport, drops me off. Like, just total sweetheart. Anyway, um, I think think the car community is a pretty splendid thing. Mm -hmm. And I flew home. I flew down to LA and back the same, the same day, day. Yes. because that's why you did not drive a car down to Radwood. Correct. Because I needed to be back first thing in the morning for our Bruno Sacco birthday party. Yes. Which was very well attended. So it was my silent hope or dream that there would be 90 cars that would show up for not Bruno Sacco's 90th birthday. And hmm. we beat that. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I think the final count was 77 Sako cars um, that I got photos of. And there were a couple that I didn't, that I didn't catch, Um, but way over a hundred total. Yeah, it was really cool. It was really neat. Um, It was an, it was a nice way to have like a little cars and coffee in the morning and celebrate the birthday for somebody who really changed the face of transportation. It's funny because there's the, anytime you go to a car show, the quantity of Sako cars, there is like six you know, That's nobody true. brings Sako cars out to shows. And so I was so surprised that so many people with those cars just materialized from somewhere. Well, and there was every, like <sighs> 18 to 85 would be my guess of the age range of people who showed up. Mm, I mean, yeah. the 500 E's showed up first. There was a yes. bunch of five, nine, 500 or 10, 500 yeah. E's, which that alone, I mean, it's gotta be the last time there were that many 500 E's together. It was probably at the freaking Porsche factory. Um, but they're the, a passionate bunch. They were, and they were also early, but they were, that was probably the oldest demo. There, a bunch of these guys looked fairly octogenarian. Mm-hmm. He had never heard of the podcast. We're just somehow told, and it's not like we really heavily advertise this. No, no. We I mean, we mentioned, mentioned it, it on the podcast and made an we've made a couple post. of social yeah. posts, but then somebody who was a 500E owner posted on the 500E owners group and that's why they all turned up. So cool. There were... Um, we had one of every body style-ish Sako car in Smoke Silver. That was my goal, was to get one of We each. were missing the R129. And, and we did not- technically a th- uh, 124 coupe, a C124. We didn't have any 126s in Smoke Silver. No, I don't, th- okay. You don't, yeah, you don't consider it a full Sako car. It's not a full Sako car. He, it, was, it was a facelift on an old design with his sort of, the beginnings of his car, but the 201 is the, the car that Sako designed from start to finish and looked mm. completely different. Clean sheet. We were also missing a C140. True. 
my car was the only 140. Which only goes to show that no one event. cares about, oh, wait, that's not true. We should say everyone cares about it because it's for sale right now. Yes, what is today? Today is December 4th. It ends today. If you're watching this in the morning, then it's ending later today. If you're watching this later than in the morning on the West Coast, then it ended earlier Then go on to bring a trailer and make a comment and laugh at Derek about how much money he lost on his latest 140. I love that car. I hope to own another one, but I am selling it because I am starting a new business. So I need the monies. So... You're- you're doing what? I quit my job. I quit ECME. You can't quit. The, oh, the, ECME. Thank God. I thought you were quitting the Carmudgeon show. No, 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 no. I'm not going anywhere from until we get canceled or I die or whatever. How we haven't been canceled already with your opinions. Or, it's <laughs> my opinions yeah. and your mouth. <laughs> well, yeah, but uh, okay. So you're starting a new job. I'm going to pretend like I don't know this already. <gasps> Gasp. You're uh, starting a new business. I'm going to be a used car dealer. You already were. I know, but oh, you were no, no, a no. used car dealer. You were a used car, used car salesman. salesman. Now you're a used car dealer? Yeah, yeah. So I'm starting my own dealer. Daihatsu's and Daewoo's? Yes. And uh, if we can find them, original first generation Kias. Sophia? Love a Sophia, oh, yes. Oh, I'd love a Maybe Kia the Sophia. first Sportage also. Uh, uh, sure. Which was body on frame, interestingly. Um, yes. Would you like to tell the audience more about your newest not endeavor? Yet. I'm not ready to publicly announce anything else other than to sign post that that's happening. Uh, when we have a website, I will. I Keep your fucking no- mouth shut until you got something to say. All right, I'm going to go back to our notes. What? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just, I feel like we're doing this. This is just the general housekeeping episode. This is sort of like, we're not getting a full episode. Oh, we talked about this in the intro already. But we did? Anyway. Oh, yes. We did. About how the, because of last Friday's um, Cybertruck episode. Oh, yeah. Wait, and if you think that was a long episode, wait until next week's episode that we haven't recorded yet and don't know about because that's possibly the longest curmudgeon show ever. That's true. It's but about, it's not the P episode. Don't no. Don't get your is, panties all on fire just yet. Uh, it's about. You Haggerty's can do that next year. Um, but no, pan. Panty. Anyway, um, I just had a fun Thanksgiving because I flew my 17 year old niece in and did the Thunder Hill teen survival driving school with her. Well, she did it the same school that I had put her brother, my nephew through two years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, got Beatrice back on the road. Beatrice is my shitty oldie 30. Yeah. Beatrice has been off the road for 18 months. (laughs) More than that. It was February. No, it was April. It was April. Mm-hmm. Okay, so 16 months, uh, 19 months. Um, it's not off the road is a strong word. That's true. Uh, she Out still ran service. and drove. She yes. was just not being used for extended trips mm-hmm. because the throw out bearing was making horrendous noises and I was worried that it was going to seize. Plus, you know, it was kind of a little bit beat up in that rally that we did. Um, yeah, broken windscreen, broken headlights. Well, then the windscreen broke again. Um, so it had Extra a little broken. thing and then uh, broken. So I, that's been replaced. Haggerty claims, dude, I didn't even know I had a zero dollar deductible. Yeah, windscreens. Oh my God. So I call Safe Flight Autoglass, which is Haggerty is a partnership with. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll just see whatever. It's Beatrice. It's not like if it were my, honestly, for the, the, the touring, like when I broke a windshield on my 325i touring, I got one for a, a new windshield from the dealer and had a tech who did all the windshields back in the day do it, charge me whatever he wanted, and he did an amazing job. Because I don't want any scratches or imperfections or leaks or anything. Beatrice doesn't really matter. Uh, Safe Flight, I go on their website, I type in the info, and it's like, we have these in stock. Would you like us to do it tomorrow morning? And I was like, yes. And then it was like, do you have insurance? And I said, yes. And I type H A and it fills it in Haggerty. And it, then says, we'll contact them with your VIN and check your check your everything. I was like, oh, well, what can a windshield pro- possibly cost? If I, whatever. So uh, the next morning, the guys show up, they install the windshield. It was 303 bucks, which is frankly way more than I expected just because I'm- Installed? Installed, yeah. I was Not cheap. OE glass. Not OE glass, but it, it's glass that's clear. <laughs> that's <laughs> all I really care about. For that cracks. Yes. And, um, and then- I happen to notice that my Haggerty policy has a zero deductible on glass. So I just submitted the claim online. I'm like, sorry, I should have probably gotten authorization in advance, but I replaced the windshield already. Here's the receipt. Boom. I just got an email like literally 20 minutes after they, they called me this, like when we first sat down here actually, and I already got the email with like, send us your bank info and we'll just reimburse you. Fucking amazing. Yeah. I did um, that with um, my first R129 and of course, OE glass. 
And I even got the little Mercedes Benz product sticker and on eBay for ten bucks, and I gave them that receipt, and they reimbursed me for that as well. Yeah, that's which cool. Was pretty cool. I think I lived in Pennsylvania for ten years, and oh yes, mandatory re- insurance coverage for, there with no deductibles, and uh-huh. it can't be held against you. And I just kind of think that's how it should be. It's a windshield. Yeah, because people safety. drive around with vehicles in all sorts of states of repair yeah. in California. And so I, you know, I was driving around, I sort of resurrected it back. We did the double body swap. So we did the full suspension. So the full Specky 30 suspension kit, which is shocks, springs, anti-roll bars, the reinforcements for those anti-roll bars, um, do those the plates, anti-roll bar mounts bolt on or are they welded on? Bolted on with then an ex, an extra weld welded bracket in the back because they'll otherwise break off of the, um, uh, control arms. E28s always do that. Yeah. Uh, so all of that got swapped over to, from the wagon over to Beatrice with the only difference being that I did not once again go with H and R race springs. I went with sport, which is one notch higher. And then I got new sport, uh, springs for the wagon that now H and R makes specifically for the wagon. Oh, that's cool. Um, with Bill Steins, uh, two of which I purchased, two of which were given to me by, uh, Straighten from uh, five three nine and five three nine because he's so. How does it insane. ride? Because that car always rode too firmly. In yeah, my no, so and I put, it sat a little low in the back. It was well. I oh. fixed that last year by by padding it up. So there's pads, spring pads. So those springs are now on the sedan, which is perfect. It sits perfectly, and then the wagon now sits appropriately because it's got the correct springs on it, mm-hmm. um, and it rides much much better. That's it's good. the the whole problem. There were two problems with the ride. One was the bars. The the sway bars are just enormous. Um, and the second was the heim jointed upper shock mounts um, that were part of the camera kit. So I still have two and a half or three degrees of negative camber in the wagon because my f- fucking hero and friend Bill Arnold, who pulled a midnight night after working all day uh, doing the swap with me with, on his two lifts, uh, found these adjustable camber plates that like use the factory mounts, they're genius. Huh. So it still handles like it's on rails, but it no longer does those harsh impacts where you're bang, bang, boom, 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 or yeah, yeah. and no more squeaks from the back end. That I was always bitching about all the squeaks and the rattles from the back and the wagon's just not as structurally strong in the, in the back. Yes, there's a big hole in the back yeah. of the car. Um, well, and plus no cross member. So remember E30s don't have folding seats. So there's a big cross member in the back of the back seat that's a stiffening member on the regular cars. Um, my wagon just rattled and squeaked and that's now gone huh. uh, because of two things. Number one, the, um, the lack of bars, the suspension swap. And number two, the shop, when they painted this car, was 10 years ago now, eight years ago, whatever it was, put almost none of the bolts back in. So by, to get to the upper shock mounts, you have to basically disassemble the entire rear of the car. Um, the, all the carpeting's got to come out, the side panels, the speakers, everything's got to come out. And I now put it all back together. And funny enough, when it's back together with actually the bolts that are supposed to be there to hold it. What, the holding what on? The, the interior the side, trim? The interior trim. Oh. The side panels. Screws that hold the interior yeah. trim in. Not the suspension. No, that was... Yeah, no. or other mechanical Well, bits. the seats were loose. One of the doors was loose. I mean, uh. the shop did a beautiful job painting, but their reassembly was a little bit... Casual. Pushed. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so I got... This was all done so that B could be back on the road with a fresh windshield after... Because then I got hit with a big rock on 101. Um with a fresh windshield for G to drive on that teen driving school. And uh, I'll throw some videos in it, but it is safe to say she now know what it feels. She knows what it feels like to be in low earth orbit. Mm. <laughs> oh, she so did what, some uh, spinning. She learned uh, very quickly that the transition from the dry part of the skid pad to the wet part of the skid pad was going to result in a change in grip level. Yeah, and of course they're <laughs> race tires. So they're all comps. So it goes from like, la la la, like amazing, holy shit grip to ice. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, my wonderful Beatrice performed flawlessly and my wonderful niece who did not think she really had any interest in driving driving, enthusiastically, um, went from being a novice stick shift driver to just getting in and driving like it was nothing in two days Mm -hmm. and then went and kicked ass on this track. I am so proud of her and I'm so proud of Thunderhill for offering a really, it's 150 bucks for an entire day of instruction and exercise. They should do that for adults. Well, adults can do this. Actually, I almost brought my mom. Really? Um, yeah. Oh, uh, so it's not, so adults, you do you have to... So they call it, they used to call it like children's survival. Must, it, adults must be accompanied by a child. 
Yes. No. <laughs> um, no, it used to be called Teen Survival, and now I think it's just called Family Car Control Clinic. Mm -hmm. um, and it's there, it, it's meant for anyone of any age to sharpen their skills. Um, and I thought it would be fun to have my mom there um, with my with my niece. Like, so grandma's here, like, beating up her car, but just schedule wise didn't work out. Drat. Um, but uh, we should get, like, all of our moms to get together and do, like, I would a definitely do school. that with my mother, for sure. I think your mom would, she like, She has probably, an abarth. Oh, well, we need perfect. to get her something rear-wheel drive so she can drift around skip bed. Oh, do it in the XJR with the, traction, with the traction control off. Yes, of course. That was the other thing is they're like, we highly recommend that, you know, all of you guys for the morning uh, keep tra traction and stability control on. And Jay's like, uh, we don't got that. Do it. Uh, <laughs> no. And you're going to be fucking really sideways. Um, then there was this, it was, I, what a great program it was because the first exercise that Who our group did. this on? Thunder Hill Raceway. The track itself? The track itself, yeah. Huh. It's all volunteers. Everyone who's there is, is volunteering their time. Um, and, you know, the, the the biggest cause of death for teens is car accidents. And most of them are avoidable. So, um, but they've split you up into different groups. And the first exercise is a emergency lane change under braking. Yes. So you go towards a sign and it either lights up yes, right I've or left. Yes, I've done this before. And at the last and a second. a 911 with no ABS. <laughs> It's, so you got to jink to one side and come to an ABS stop. If you or, have it. <laughs> well, this poor girl was there in her Hyundai Sonata hybrid. And her, she took off like she was not afraid of that gas pedal. Just the whole way uh, in the acceleration zone. And then she turns and I'm like, wow, good. A lot of these, a lot of these students were like 16, 17, 15 years old. They were really tentative. Tentative. She came in like she knew, like she was a boss. And then the light points left, she turns left and then locks them up, adds full lock and skids through about 7,000 cones. <laughs> and I'm like, what in the fuck just happened here? And so she comes around the corner and her fender liner falls out. So we run over to her and she's like, what? Every light on the dashboard's on. The fucking fender liner was loose and fell out and took the wires for the wheel speed sensor out, which took out her ABS, stability control, blind spot monitoring, all this other shit, and power steering. Wow. So I'm like, oh, fuck. Like, this is going to be a rough ride for her. What an absolute pleasure to watch a young brain learn how to drive around a mechanical mm. fit. Within the, the, the next episode, the next exercise was braking. And she, of course, the first time came in, just flat spotted. <laughs> You're like, oh, no, there's like an entire set of tires gone. <laughs> Two stops later, she's learning how to threshold, threshold break. break. And by the end of it, they were adding in a sudden break in the middle of, or a sudden turn in the middle of the braking zone. And she would come in just with a little bit of squeal from the tire and you'd he hear her lift, turn, and then get right back on it. She was fucking brilliant. It's what an, uh, yeah, $150 for an entire day worth of um, abuse. Mm -hmm. it, fantastic. So, wow. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited for that. I Everyone should do that. it. Yeah. Put your kids in school, learn. You know, the idea is put yourself. Yeah. Well, the idea on this one was Gianna's like, I'm not afraid of the brake pedal. And I'm like, oh, really? And, you know, she was overconfident as all young drivers are. Does Beatrice have ABS? Beatrice does have ABS. So I said to her, well, what happens when you press really hard? And she's like, well, it gives you that warning. She didn't use those words, but I'm like, what? And she's like, you know, we're like kind of buzzes. And so you have to back off a little bit. I'm like, ding, ding, this is why you're doing this. You think you know how to brake, but you need to be comfortable matting the pedal and sitting in ABS. And she's like, why? I'm like, that's what it does. It makes that noise and pushes back on your foot. And she's like, oh, I thought that was to tell me not to break it. I'm like, no, no, no. That's telling you it's working. Um, so just the fact that she's now done 75 full ABS, ABS stops, stops means that in an, an emergency situation, she's not going to be afraid of that pulsing that she gets back from the pedal. Um, and knowing that she can turn the car in the middle of an ABS zone um, and avoid a crash. Like great, great teaching tool. Mm -hmm. so, um, yes. So I have a lemons race coming up. Surprise. That just happened. Yeah, I totally didn't remember. I like, I feel so bad that my, my, I've been so busy the last couple of weeks that I forgot about a lemons race coming up. So um, if uh, <clears throat> it's at Sonoma and if it rains, please wish us luck. Mm. That's all I have to say. Yes. Speaking of low earth orbit. Yes. Um, and uh, actually this is going to be fun because Bridgestone sent us 
uh, a set of RE71RS tires. It's their new, the replacement wet for the RE71R. Well, apparently they're amazing in the wet, um, mm. but they're dry. I mean, they're like semi R comps. Yes, so yeah. the last time we ran this car at Sonoma uh, when I was there was two years ago and we won the race outright. Uh, and we were on E36s? The E28 one. Uh-huh. Uh, we have an E28 and E36. Um, but uh, now we have a fresh motor again in the E28 because they sort of tend to not last based on some how some of our team members drive. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> using all of the RPMs. Using and all then, of the thermal capacity so. in the RPMs. But uh, <clears throat> now with like genuinely grippy tires, I can't wait to see what these things do. So, um, Splendid. That is all of the updates from my side. And you just drove a Rivian? RS. Oh, yes, that's right. Speaking of Thanksgiving, my brother has a Rivian, the uh, SUV and he's one. he's thankful for it? Is that what it? No, no, I was visiting my uh, brother for Thanksgiving, and uh, I drove his cars. His two-car solution is an um, ND2 and a Rivian R1S, one of which smells like dog. Oh, the it's dog not makes the Miata. Huh? No. Um, <laughs> very small dog. Um, so I, I can't help but think that has to be the world's most perfect two-car solution. If you're into contemporary motoring, yeah, I think so. I, I mean, mean, would you substitute a GT3 for the Miata? I wouldn't. Mm. not at 10 X the price. Yeah. Um, but that is a hell of a two car solution. Um, what more could you possibly need? Okay. So how was the Rivian though? Uh, it was good. I mean, you're, have you driven this S or Mm. only the T both? Um, the only complaint genuinely that I had about the S was that I felt like it was a little under damped. Uh, uh, you'd like go over a speed bump. There's like speed bumps on his street and you'd, after the bump, there'd be this sort of residual vertical motion that I found not in keeping with, you know, I mean, I've been spending a lot of time in S classes lately, so maybe I'm spoiled, but it felt like not a thing that modern car should be still doing. When you have adaptive shocks, there's no excuse for a mismatch between spring rate and shock and access Yeah, it motion felt like a little bit oversprung and underdamped. So this has been funny you said that because when we right before we started recording, we started talking and I started to say my only one and I stopped myself because I wanted to say it on camera. My only one real complaint with R1S and R1T are suspension tuning. Mm. Um, and the I have been told many, many times that uh, by different people that this latest suspend uh, latest software update was huge in terms of suspension. my brother did say that it recently got an update and that it was better than it had been when he yeah. first bought it. It got an over the air update that it did to itself or whatever. But, uh, but I still, I mean, there's a hardware limitation. It doesn't matter what you do with software at some point, the choice. I mean, in theory, if you had magneto rheological shocks, you could, you, and air springs, you could pretty much do anything, but it doesn't. Mm. I've also heard supposedly that this suspension was optimized for the first product, which was the T and that in the shortening of the wheelbase that comes with going to the S that it doesn't work as well in the S. Uh, I, I'm not surprised to hear that. I, I hadn't heard that, but the R1T, again, my biggest complaint was from pride. a reputable source. Yeah. The S was, went from bad to worse. Um, and the, the S is the one that I would choose, but, uh, I don't know how I would have tolerated the nonstop bucking. Um, mm-hmm. and the problem is there's just a disconnect. All four corners do a different thing at the different time. And at ride height, at the, the cruising ride height, which it automatically drops down to at highway speeds, you're bounding, even with nothing in the truck, bounding off of the bump stops at all four corners. I don't repeatedly. think I drove it on the highway. Mm. I did drive it on a sort of um, fast sweeping road up mm. to the mountains. And I thought overall its poise was pretty good. It drives smaller than it is yeah. for sure. I mean, the thing weighs as near as 7,000 pounds. And, and obviously the way that it d- departs is tremendous. Yeah. I mean, it's just outrageous to like in a daily basis. This is why people who have not dailyed an EV don't understand this, but the way that it, you know, fucks off from a light for lack of a better yes, term. Yes. It's truly out, uh, like extraordinary. Mm-hmm. And like up a hill, there's a very long steep hill, like it's probably half a mile long and it's probably a tw- 10, 12% grade mm-hmm. uh, and it's perfectly straight. And uh, people always seem to haul ass up that hill. And I, mm-hmm. you know, I just matted it up the hill and I was just like, you know, whoever was trying to be present was very much not after that. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, but yeah, what a brilliant product overall. Mm, right. I and mean, the colors and the rendering of just about everything that they've done is really impressive. Yeah, it's really. a really compelling device. Right. I would have it all on us in a second. I can't wait to see the... Yeah, if I needed too. that mission, which is yeah. basically like two baby seats, two parents and dog, big mm -hmm. dog. Uh, I was just recently in one with seven of us. I mean, seven grown adults. No, yeah, yeah, third, like with the third unbelievable row. Unbelievable how much, how, how much room there is in that. Well, yeah, and you've got a f the frunk, which yeah. takes up the area where the engine is, plus mm -hmm. a full-size you know, load area mm -hmm. on the back. Yeah. It's really... Uh, it's an impressive feat. Yeah. Um, I just wish the suspension. So I, the, the latest, I just drove an R1T uh, for last week's Cybertruck episode that we talked about. By the way, if you haven't seen last week's episode, it was a bonus episode on Friday and it was the near exclusive that I had on the uh, Tesla Cybertruck with lots of info. You should watch that. Um, but getting out of the Cybertruck and into the R1T, I was reminded that it's still not, it's better. The ride is definitely better but it still doesn't settle down the way I want it to. It's just mm -hmm. choppy and moving around and bobby. And, mm -hmm. um, they, yeah. need to, they need to borrow a few Lucid engineers yeah, for exactly. a couple weeks. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. Um, I told, actually, Tesla, though, for, for the Cybertruck. I'm like, you guys need your limit uh, limit handling could use uh, a couple people Some Lucid, from Lucid. <laughs> to which they said, Kindly fuck off, sir. Well, the guy who did the Cybertruck's tuning is uh, from McLaren and Lamborghini. And I'm like, oh, and he was a, I met him. He was, he's the guy that's tuning the steering on that thing. Incredibly nice guy, very charismatic, charismatic Italian. Um, but I thought to myself, uh oh, like I've driven Huracans that are among the worst handling cars I've ever driven. Like I had an LP, the rear wheel drive one, the, which I guess LP 560 uh, dash two literally tried to kill me. I mean, it spun in a straight line with stability control on repeatedly. Um, there was something horribly oscillating wrong at the back end of the car under power and it would just oscillate and whoosh, right around i've had huracans that understeered so badly that i could not drift them for a show that i was hired to do stunt driving on which was really embarrassing because i they thought it was me and then i drifted the camry around <laughs> the rental car and i'm like guys it's not me but then i've driven other huracans that are like transcendent so I don't know what the what fuck it the is. Hell? Same with McLarens. They're assy sometimes on the way in and uncontrollable and scary. Sometimes they're okay. So I don't know. I was like, like, oh God, I hope they didn't get the wrong guy. Like, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm sure there's more to it, but they were like, well, you know, we don't have, uh, you know, for Cybertruck, it's not the hugest priority to have no handling. I don't think anyone who buys that is really going to give a shit. But still, I'm like, it only takes, I could give you their numbers, four or five of them <laughs> over, over at Lucid, like they're right down the street. Um, I'm sure they did not like hearing that, mm. but what are you going to do? Um, that's it. No other updates from your world? Uh, no, I do, not to my knowledge. I uh, have been busy getting okay. a new business going. That you can't tell us about because you suck. I'm going to be a used car dealer. Yeah? I just got to get a dealer's license and somewhere to conduct business and, you know, all that stuff. Okay. There'll be um, more in a minute. So then we're, we're going to make this a short episode, but I have yes. one final question. Mm. Something I thought about recently. Sorry, I just spat upon you. Um, your brother's two-car solution mm -hmm. is kind of perfect. Recently, I was thinking about what would happen if I had to get down to a couple cars from my own. Why were you having such thoughts? Because uh, the, the Beatrice not running, not not being perfect was weighing on me. The Beat is still has a check engine light um, because I haven't gotten a chance to pull the oh, timing belt off again. you're just feeling a little overwhelmed. Yeah, I, I have a lot going on work-wise and otherwise. And it was just, the last month was insane um, in a good way work-wise. Um, but, you know, like I, I'm a little overwhelmed and I keep thinking about like, what would happen? I have 11 cars. Mm -hmm. That's a fucking problem. Like that's not normal. And so I thought, what would, ha how could I get down to two? Could I get down to four? Could I, what combo of what cars could I sell if I had to? And the, th the thing is, if you lined up all the cars, I would go down the list and say, I don't want to sell any of them. But that may not be the case forever, right? At some point I may not be able to maintain 10, 12 cars, or maybe I'll want more and I have, something's got to go. And so I was on a bike ride and I was thinking like, what would I do? And I thought, you know what? I could actually get down to, <laughs> so fucked up. I could get down to four cars mm. kind of easily. Like I could keep the Scirocco, the 308 GT4, the Bitch Basket and the E30. Wagon. The wagon. 
And I have a front engine car. Yeah, I have a front wheel drive four seater. The Scirocco is definitely not going anywhere ever. But then I have, you know, a convertible. I have a wagon. I have rear drive car. I have a drift car if I need to. I kind of have everything I need. I have, you know, mid engine car. Um, and those four sort of cover enough base. And then I'm like, it's interesting that you have two Mark ones in there. Yeah, I know. That is, <laughs> but the Scirocco is like a given. The Scirocco is like never going anywhere. And, but that's still, if I had to choose it or the cabbie, I'd, I would choose the Scirocco, but it would be a really difficult thing. Like, really? Yeah. The cabbie is like number three. It's like really? Scirocco number one, Ferrari number two, cabbie number three. Really? And then E30 number four. Yeah. Uh. Um, which is a, not what anyone would ever expect. But every time I think about selling something, I'm like, I'll just drive the cabbie. It's, you know, redundant. Uh, and then I drive it. <laughs> like there's no way, no way. So, so I could get down to those four cars plus obviously Vangina and the e-golf, right? Cause you need daily driver and the, the van is just a work appliance. I don't want to get rid of the Rover. I'm not done with the Rover yet. I don't want to get rid of the, the Elise. It's too good of a benchmark um, for a lot of other reasons. Don't want to get rid of Beatrice because it's, it's a car I can park in the street and beat the shit out of. I'm like, I don't want to get rid of any of these cars. You left the 190E out. I don't want to get rid of the 190 because it's the best car I own. Um, I don't want to get rid of the beat because it's just so stupid and fun and small. And I haven't, I'm not done with it yet. Like I haven't had enough fun with it yet. That's all of them. Right. Mm. I don't know. Um, this is sad. This is like, I am now that, like that lady who has 32 kids Kid, and can't remember cats. them. Yeah. <laughs> um, a lot of cats, but the, what I wanted to ask you is you're good at selling cars. I do. I am. Yes. I don't get emotionally attached to cars generally. Okay. So you have how many cars now? Seven, eight. Okay, some astronomically ridiculous number of cars. Yeah. You have to get down to two cars right now. What are they? What is Derek's two-car solution? Of cars that I currently own? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I keep the 964 because it is... Uh, I don't form emotional attachments to car. What? That's not why I'm attached to it, actually. If, I mean, if I <laughs> if I could trade it for one that was a different color that was otherwise exactly the same, I would do that. Okay. <laughs> Other, in other words, I would color change it. Yeah. I would. I like. I want a car that I can haul ass on on mm -hmm. a good road, and it's the only car I really have that I, I guess the, G, the GTI I could do that. But that car is sort of a tool. Uh, the track car. Oh, you have Mark V. Mark V GTI. I was like, hold on, you sold your GTI. Yeah, Mark V GTI. I want a car that's good on a back road that's rear wheel drive. And so that the, the one car that I have that really does that is the 964. Okay. You know, I like the 911 experience. So I, if I had a impact bumper 911, I would choose that one instead. But something that's good at the limit on a back road. Okay. And then um, it would it'd be a Mercedes of some kind. A Saco uh, Mercedes of some kind. Some kind. It would be tempting to keep the 221 S550 because it has four wheel drive and is such a like opposite of the 964. It's so like sort of luxurious and premium and sort of like ritzy and it has four wheel drive so I could like make it a snow car. Like I think it would be amazing to use it as a snow vehicle. Um, I, it, it, when you pulled up in that thing, oh my, it looks, it looks money i know it really like, does. i can't believe how expensive that car still looks yeah especially given what you paid for it i know um, but th i mean that's how worthless. 221s are they they depreciate heavily yeah. uh and so you know that's would be a contender just having something sort of modern and just I love so how you think premium that's modern. it's 10 years old but it, you I know, know it, i know but i think it's modern too radar cruise control was yeah. an option it's got heated and ventilated and massaging seats i mean i'm really enjoying the sort of full luxury car experience but of course the real answer although maybe not because of the ride quality is an e63 wagon i mean e63 wagons are so like harsh it's surprising yeah. that it's a stock mercedes product because it's so rough That's riding the german but, way m products and amg products and audi s products they all just uh, we put sand in the dampers and call it a day because they don't have the roads that we do same thing with the because i've been <laughs> driving around in the 140 s class and then i i hadn't driven the c43 for three or four weeks until yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I was like, holy shit, this thing ride, rides hard. I mean, I'm just getting in my elderly age, I'm getting S classy, yeah. right? And that's so, so funny. It's like that you the would... opposite of like two very different yeah. experiences that are complementary with like sort of no overlap. I would never call this the 202 C43's ride harsh. Dr drive it. I was, I remember reading the period You're road test. Stock suspension? Yeah. I read the period road test and people were like, this thing rides really hard. And I was like, these that's people stiff. are a bunch of you know soft 
peasants or whatever. Oh, fuddy duddies. And uh, no, nah, I, I drive it around and it's, it's the way it handles impacts is not impressive. And it's got, you know, Michelins that are two years old. Like it's not the it was old got tires. Inch wheels. I mean, that was yeah. huge for the day. Yeah, but 18s were, you know, will fit and people put 18s mm-hmm. on them, which is shocking to me. And people lower them, which is also shocking yeah, no, to me. Yeah, and then like, they really are. They are but it's, ox it's Even in this form, mm. it's, it's pretty harsh. So, I mean, that's a weird two-car solution to choose. I mean, the joke is that my two-car solution is Scirocco and Ferrari, but it also includes an Eagle. <laughs> like, there's yeah. no, there is no. I mean, no. The, the wagon, but the wagon is not. Do you have any 63 wagon? Oh, no, 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 no the, the 124 yeah. wagon. It's not as, uh, I don't know. It's not as creamy. <laughs> Oh my God, you are getting old. I am getting old, I know. So everything you, you want your second, first of all, you live in a city. No, I mean, the real the real answer is the wagon and the 964, the 124 wagon. And so if you could have like an electric runabout city car, like like an e-golf, or get an e-golf back or get a, um, even a Tesla or something that like you could drive Cluster. up. Yeah. You, you would, so W124 wagon or technically S124 and your Porsche. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, interesting. I like playing this game. Anytime I yeah. see a pairing of cars, I mean, there's an Instagram account dedicated to this. It's not t- so, so active right now, but I love the concept of yeah. like two car solution, you know, because sometimes people post things, you know, it's a, it's a bunch of reposting that the people tag them and then he reposts mm-hmm. the stories. And so I think a lot of times I'm like, that's stupid. That's a dumb two car solution. Mm-hmm. That's not in keeping with the spirit of the two car solution. If I ran this account, I would be much <laughs> oh, less permissive. No. <laughs> uh, no, but you, you choose, like, and I especially, like, if things are from a certain particular era. Like, I was photographing, we had a 512TR at work, and I drove my uh, 500E, mm-hmm. and they were parked next to each other as I was op- went inside to open the building up to put the 512TR, and I st- sat there and looked at it, and I was like, holy shit, this would, like, in 1992, oh, this yeah. is just, like, the absolute money, mm-hmm. like, shot. I also, when I was doing the the BTS on the McLaren F1, my, I drove my 500E that day, so I had the 500E and the McLaren F1 parked next to each other, and Another. I was just like... Oh, great two car solution. Wow. <laughs> I mean, that's the Mr. Bean, that's the Rowan Atkinson yeah. two car solution. Yeah, that's he true. had a 500E and a McLaren F1. I, I got to think that my best two car solution before I started. So, the problem in, in my line of work is that, right, you, we all know this, I don't have to have a daily driver. I have, I have access to everything. You get a press I, car, yeah. Press cars, and I, have, I get experiences in cars that I, when I, you know, when I'm at work that I don't, that reduces, put it this way, that allows me to drive an e golf as my daily. For mm-hmm. when I need, and look, it's fourteen thousand seven hundred miles in four. I'm almost four years, and like I don't obviously need it that much. But uh, prior to this industry, when I was in my last life, uh, my two car solution was an E thirty nine five twenty five high automatic wagon and a nine eleven cab. Oh my god, you're cab. like a, this a was businessman. In, <laughs> well, this was in 05. They were both relatively new. They were three and two and four years old. Um, and this was me like. Like, okay, you know, like I can spend I've made it. I've made it. And I thought, I truly thought, well, the, the five series was a fight with my CFO at work because I called him cheap and I got a five series <laughs> uh, a lease company vehicle out of that. And the 911, I truly thought I would never lose any money on it because it was an $84,000 cab that I bought for thirty nine five at the end of his, the guy's three year lease. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, no 911 has ever been worth less than 40,000 bucks. Pfft money in the bank i can drive this thing forever and not lose a penny single most the biggest loss i've ever took on any car because 996s didn't do what every other night yes they went they to fourteen thousand yeah, dollars thank god i sold it before then but um it you know here it's a a black stick shift convertible four seat 911 and a black five seat plus everything i could fit in an automatic wagon it was like i what other thing could i possibly need yeah. Except all-wheel drive, yes. um, which I didn't. I mean, I, I mean, my my proposed one twenty four and nine sixty four solution is the same thing, but a decade earlier yeah. in nineteen ninety four. Same concept, right? Yes. You know, fast. Although the the E thirty nine was not fast. No, one hundred and eighty four horsepower with yeah. an automatic. But I, it was everything I needed. Yeah, I mean, the nine eleven was fast enough. I I still believe that the E thirty nine is probably top ten best, top five, top possibly three best cars ever made. Hmm. I mean, it's really up there with, like, you know, we'll throw 124 and 201 there as a, as a pair. I almost would say 140. Ah, it was ugly as sin. I know, but it's such a just, it feels like a totally different league. 
in it terms is. of expensiveness. Yeah, it was. When you interact with it and when you drive it. Like, I literally remember the day I, I bought it without driving it. Oh, really? I, so the first time I drove it was after I gave the woman I was buying it from the money and t- taking the title away. And then I get in the car and I'm driving it out of the parking lot at the police station because it was a Craigslist deal. She's like, can we meet at the police station parking lot? I was like, sure. So I'm pulling out of the police station and we, I went out over the, the whatever. The, the, Speed bump? No, the... the interface between driveway and street the oh. low point of the drainage yeah. ditch or whatever as soon as i went over that i said holy shit yeah i was just like this is on a whole other level i mean i've owned five 124s i've owned two 202s a 201 I've owned 129s though and two one it's different from right. a 129 well yeah it's actual got suspension travel yeah it, it, yeah and two 129s and that first bump i went over literally within feet of driving the car for the first time i was like holy shit so here's a question. Ride quality, 221 or 140? 140. 140, right? The 221 is on 20s, though. Mm-hmm. Those cars were available with 18s, 19s, and 20s. Yeah. I'm very interested to... I was thinking about buying a set of 18s for the 221 to see what it's like on that, those, uh, on, on more sidewall. Mm-hmm. Uh, but as it sits now, 16s on the 140, mm-hmm. the, the ride quality is better. Vastly better, I'm sure. It, the body control is worse, of course. Yeah. It's an old car with right. coil springs uh instead Rather of air suspension, air suspension and yeah. adjustable shocks yeah so uh. the, but ride quality alone the 140 Wins. is better huh interesting interesting anyway this has been the short long episode um it, sort of a filler bonus episode in addition to last friday cyber truck episode not a filler bonus. there was some a substantive bonus. information here. no no no, no. There, uh, yes i'm i'm sh- giving us the short shrift uh all this that to say like- 49 minutes. Yes. Almost a full episode. Right. Um, yep. Okay. Well, join us next week for a discussion of market. Haggerty bull market. Bull market. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and then uh, this has been the Carmudgeon Show. Anything else to cover? Bye. Or should we send go on our merry way? Bye. Okay. Happy Monday. <laughs>